Samis are people that you can find living in Lapland. Sweden, Finland, Norway. The Sami land is a wide area that covers several Sami tribes and languages, such as Northern Sami, Kalta Sami, and Nari Sami. The majority of the Samis were fishermen, hunters, and above all, reindeer herders. Therefore, the reindeer is one of the most sacred animals in the Sami culture. Some other totem animals of the Sami were bears and birds, but the reindeer was the most important. And throughout the ages, the lifestyle of the people got more intertwined with the reindeer herding. Samis got milk from the reindeer to drink, the flesh of the reindeer to eat. Reindeers helped people to pull heavy things and people made clothes from the reindeer fur. In the 16th century, there was a big change in the Sami culture and people started to measure their wealth according to the amount of reindeers. The ways of herding also changed from static to nomadic lifestyles. The reason for this was that people ran out of food. They had fished all the lakes empty and there were no animals to hunt. People realized that by following the natural cycle of the reindeer, they produced more offsprings. Herders started to follow the reindeer to their mating sites and places where reindeer gave birth. This lifestyle change made Sami's connection to reindeers even deeper. Reindeer meat is very salty. It is food that you can survive in a cold climate, and this is one of the reasons why reindeer were important for the Samis, who were used to the harsh weather conditions. Samoy tribes in Siberia still follow this nomadic lifestyle and the natural cycle of the reindeer. In Scandinavian countries, herding became again static around the 18th and 19th centuries because of political issues and drawing the lines of national borders. In many ways, these political changes were harmful to the Samis, especially when it came to land rights. This is an issue that is still on the table today and relevant for the survival of the Sami lifestyle and culture. But there is a legend in Sami folklore about the white reindeer. Albino reindeer was the most magical reindeer. White reindeer was the leader of all the reindeers. If a human would catch the white reindeer, it would bring them luck, riches, and happiness. Totemic belief in the reindeer spirit was essential and was also one of the reasons for people to take especially good care of these reindeers. In ancient Finland, when a bear was hunted and killed, the hunter prayed that the bear's spirit would find its way home to the star sky. And this is similar to the Samis. They had similar traditions and beliefs. When a reindeer was killed by hunters, the herders prayed that the great reindeer spirit would take care of those reindeers that were killed. Only the best and most beautiful reindeer were sacrificed for the great reindeer spirit. One of the oldest traditions was to take the antlers of the reindeer and hang them to the top of a seta. A seta was a sacred grove of the Samis, an altar where people made sacrifices. They were usually large stone or tree formations. A great reindeer spirit was seen as a white reindeer or a hybrid between a man and a reindeer. In many cultures, there have been deities who had antlers like Carnunus in Celtic myths and pastoral god Pan in Greek legends. For the Samis, everything in nature was holy and everything in animals was holy as well. All parts of the reindeer had magical properties. This included reindeer's skin, fur, milk, flesh, hooves, and especially the antlers because they were reaching to the skies and were directly connected to the universe. In rituals, shaman dressed up in a coat made from reindeer fur and wore antlers in his or hers head. This was a way to connect with the great reindeer spirit. During this particular ritual, the shaman became one of the reindeers and a servant to the great reindeer spirit. Sami people had a very close relationship with nature. Bones were seen as especially magical. Sami children were thought that when they found a dead animal, they had to, to collect all the bones together and bury the animal. When the skeleton was completed, the animal would continue its life in the afterlife. And it was bad luck to bury a reindeer 
even if one of the bones was missing. Another tradition states that the sun owned a cosmic reindeer herd, and he was pulled in a sledge around the world. Early in the year, the sledge was pulled by a strong bear, making the sun bright and powerful, but he replaced his bear with a reindeer bull, then a reindeer cow, as the year progressed, causing the sun to be weaker and weaker until it vanished entirely in winter. One ancient Sami story tells of a constellation in the night sky, a hunter with his bow aimed at the cosmic reindeer in an eternal hunt. When the arrow finally lands and the cosmic reindeer falls, the world as we know will end. The drums that Sami shaman used in their rituals were made of reindeer skin, which the Noedi, the Sami shaman, used to enter a trance and travel to the spirit realm. The drum, which was decorated with symbols of both the mundane and the divine, was handheld and it was small and light, and it was beaten with a drumstick carved from reindeer bone. Reindeer sinews were used to attach the hides to the frame of the drum. The world view of the Sami was animistic by nature with shamanistic features. The Sami believed that the two worlds of existence, the physical, earthly world and the spiritual world were bridged by special people, or the Noedi, the shaman. The drum was a means by which the Noedi entered an ecstatic trance-like state, and this was achieved by beating the drum in a rhythm which brought about this excitation. While in such a state, it was believed that the Noedi were able to leave the body and take another form. Moving as a spirit, they had the ability to change into a wild reindeer, or hide under a reindeer's neck or hoof, or travel over treetops, or underground, or swim in the form of a fish. But Finns and Karelians also had their fair share of reindeer tales and songs, like the songs of Vaden. Vaden was created by Seppo Ilmarinen, to assist him on his journeys for knowledge. Ilmarinen was an immortal artificer, capable of crafting anything. Songs of Vaden's adventures were, and still are, sung by Finnish shamans. Vaden was crafted with bones of stone, flesh of moss, and skin of birch bark. Seppo gave her lichen to eat, mead to drink, and she carried him far and wide in search of knowledge and components necessary to create any magical items. In many totemic cultures where an animal has become a clan symbol, it usually started with stories about the animal father or the mother who had a connection to humans. In Northern Europe and Northern Asia, totem animals could be most often otters, lynxes, bears, wolves and birds. Animals that people saw around them every day and animals that had magical meanings to them. Sometimes totem animals represented the lifestyle of a certain tribe. The otter could have been a symbol for a tribe that lived next to water. Reindeers were totem animals for reindeer herders who felt a connection to the earth and admired reindeer for their qualities. The rune Hisi's elk tells the story of a hunter from a village in Lapland, a hunting community who made himself a pair of skis to ski after a forest reindeer or an elk and boasts that there is not a creature in the forest that would escape him. Some versions include that the hunter goes on to urge his people to prepare for butchering and cooking the catch. And this particular Hisi heard this boast. So it created an elk from scant ingredients and sent it to this particular village in Lapland. There, the elk destroyed huts, toppled the cooking pots, and frightened the women and children. The hunter set off on the chase and caught the elk, but when he began to boast about this particular catch, the animal became angry, tore itself away and escaped. Rushing again after the elk, the hunter's skis were broken. There is not a forest beast running on four legs that I won't surprise on these, happened a Hisi to hear. Hisi fashioned an elk, made the head from a tussock, legs from a fence post, skin from spruce bark, ears from lily pads on the pond, other flesh from rotted wood. Run there, Hisi's elk, 
reindeer elk pick your way to the forest lands of Lapland. Ran he there, he sees elk. Reindeer elk picked his way to the forest lands of Lapland. Kicked the corner of a kata, knocked over a cooking pot, spread the soup in the stove, mixed the meat in the ashes. Lapish women got to laughing, Lapish children got to weeping, Lapish dogs got to barking. Skiing after elk and forest reindeer has been a real hunting method, practiced particularly in late winter when the snow bore the weight of the skier but not that of the animal. Skiing to catch an elk or a wild reindeer may take days and the method was also considered dangerous as the animal would finally turn around and attack its pursuer with its sharp hooves. Before guns, the elk was killed with a spear, used as a ski pole, a reindeer also with a hunting knife, or the tendon of the animal's hind leg was severed using an arrow with a horizontal tip. Elk and forest reindeer were still hunted on skis in eastern Finland and Karelia in the 20th century. After the Finnish forest reindeer died out in Finland in the 1700s, they were still present in Karelia and Divina gathering on islands in large lakes in later winter and reindeer hunts were part of the hunting every winter. Many of the people conversant with the epic poetry of Ladoga Karelia have themselves been renowned reindeer hunters. The rune mentions asymmetrical skis. The long sliding ski on the left foot was called Lulu and the shorter leather covered ski for the right foot, Kalhu. It was used to kick up speed. These particular skis have been specifically intended for hunting forest reindeer and elk and used in later winter at the time of crusted snows or on the Lapish fells. The sliding ski, Lulu, was made from hard, close-grained bog pine, which stood up best to wear on rough snow. Asymmetrical skis were used mostly in Ladoga Karelia, North Karelia, Divina and Kainu but they became obsolete in the 1800s. In his work, La Ponya, Johannes Shepherds describes Sami skis and ski hunting in great detail. He comments that the Lulu was made about a foot longer than the skier, and the Kalhu only a foot shorter than the Lulu. Thus, the skier, after he sees elk with his bow and arrows, could be a member of an inland hunting community. He sees elk has been compared to a magic animal also found in the folklore of European peoples. Julius Kron interpreted he sees elk as an astral myth. The elk would be an enchanted sun elk and the hunter Odin himself, who was chasing the sun. Chasing an enchanted animal is a theme that can be tracked back to antiquity. In the legends, a supernatural elk, reindeer or other animal leads its pursuer to the underworld, into a dank ravine or other horrifying place, or to the hands of an evil being that has dispatched the animal to tempt hunters. And just like many other astral myths, the elk chase was set in the night sky. The driven animal is the Big Dipper and the Milky Way, the hunter's ski track. This particular myth may have also been recorded in rock drawings at Zalavruga Oikoyoki. There is elements of Hisi's elk, a supernaturally large elk, a coral snare, a Hisi giving birth to an elk, skiing Sami people and even a hunter who catches an elk or a reindeer. In many people's views, certain rock pictures may be interpreted as illustrations of this particular elk myth with the northern night sky as background to the ruins. Many other rock drawings would also illustrate myths known as runes, with equivalent patterns in the stars of the northern sky. Lowry, the Lapish boy, spent the fall making his skis, spent the summer on his sliders, saved the goat's butter through the summer, ram's tallow through the winter, greased his skis with the butter, coated them with ram's tallow went gliding on them, glided bogs, glided lands, glided places, skied already, glided places never crossed, 
glided before death's maw behind the halls of grave folk. Miss that swat from his gliding, forest's corner left untouched. I shall glide through that swat also, touch that corner of the forest. Heard the bark of his dog, squealing of the woolly tail, glided toward the dog's barking, looked along the dog's mouth, along the barker's coat of fur, saw a squirrel on the branches, shot once, went over, shot another, went under, wiped his gun with snow, brushed with fur fronds, combed with junipers, shot at it a third time, fell the beauty upon the snow, dropped the money skin on the snow drift, picked it up in his paw, put inside his shirt, took it to his mother, carried to the one who bore him. Mother mine, old woman, where should I put my money skin? Where my great catch? Shall I buy a stallion horse? Do not buy, my son, your father has got a stallion. Shall I buy a war saddle? Your granddad has got the saddle. Go to the Black Sea, there the maids are bathing, copper heads splashing. Choose the best of six, find the finest of seven, propose to the maiden, bring her home. This particular rune is about Lowry Lapalainen, who carefully prepares his skis and sets off to the forest with his dog in search of quarry. He skis for a long time in vain, only until one remote corner remains and he decides to examine this patch of forest. The dog tracks a squirrel up a tree. The hunter shoots, but only hits the target at the third time, having cleaned his gun with snow and fur fronds. He takes his catch home to his mother, and the rune continues with one about marrying the boy off. This particular rune is also an authentic description of hunting, recounting a winter squirrel hunt. The hunting technique is characteristic of northern peoples. It uses a dog that barks squirrels up a tree. First, the squirrel hunter made himself a pair of skis, as if it was a show of skill required of the hunter. The poetic images of carving skis are similar to those in the opening lines of Hesi's Elk. The squirrel hunter skied with his dog and looked for a quarry for a long time in spruce strands. Finally, the dog began to bark, showing where the squirrel sat. The hunter shot impatiently, only hitting the target for the third time. The rune mentions a gun. But squirrels were hunted in the past using hand and foot bows. In dry, frosty weather, dampening the wooden bow with snow was a necessary measure that restored the original tension of the bow. Wetting a gun with snow may even be dangerous. Snow frozen in the barrel can destroy the weapon. Hunting for squirrel probably dates back to the era of commercial hunting for fur, which in Finland began at least as early as the Viking era but reached its peak in the first centuries following the first millennium. The rune uses the old term raha, money, for a squirrel skin. Squirrel skins were specifically used as trading currency in the prehistoric era and later in the taxation of inland hunting communities. <laughs>